um, like I uh, did the chakras, of course, which I think is is like what, in a sense, most people involved in this genre do, and uh, you know, in, in various forms. So that this is done, uh, in, in a sense, using the kind of imagery at that time. This was, I don't know, 1970 or something. Um, that I had in, in the Theosophical tradition and in, in, the, in the Tibetan and Hindu tradition. Uh, I became very interested in, like, in, in the 19th century and its reaction, like uh, a great fan of Lewis Carroll. This, this of course, is the, the real Alice, Alice Pleasance Fidel. And uh, I, I took that and did like, a kind of photorealistic thing in which the the, the idea of the the pralya and the and the kopa, the um, the night and the and the, and the day of Brahma, uh, uh, in a sense, is being contemplated, and it's it's like her her image, her introspection, I thought was perfect for that. I did a uh, th th this was somebody wanted an, an, an actual Nandala commission, like the, some of his teacher or guru asked for specific requirements, so uh, I wanted to try it. It's a very simple one, but uh, apparently it fulfilled the requirements for her, uh, her, her meditation system. Uh, I also, for quite a while, I became very interested in paranormal phenomenon, and now what is a, has become a tradition in itself, the, the connection of, of Eastern mysticism with uh, Western physics. and. Um, I was fortunate enough a long time ago to be uh, connected with Professor DeCasse Brown, who was one of the first people to uh, take paranormal phenomenon seriously and, and, and work with it, and who brought over Swami Vivekananda to the United States. And um, so I, I had lots of in, in, interesting talks and, uh, in a sense, became in, influenced and interested in, in mind physics a lot sooner than. Uh, and other people, and began to see the connections. So that, like, the great, I call it the burning of samsara, mind physics, uh, which is a, a Buddhist way of life, and uh, I used uh, Pauline's Tanislawa, uh, Poland's greatest medium. That's like ectoplasm coming out of her mouth, uh, going to form something, you know, as like the imagery. Now, they said, like, flames. <coughs> flames are. Uh, like something that you'll find in, in, in many uh, in many of the practitioners of visionary art. You see it all that, like lake had flames all over the place. Um, those are again like flame they, they tend to take something that is a static format and and, uh, and, and make it dynamic. So that you get the the polarity between stasis and dynamism, in other words Apollo and Dionysus. And so that the, you can keep both of those things going at the same time. This is like uh, almost like a kind of re religious syncretism with, um, with Hinduism on the outside, uh, Christianity in, and then like a kind of uh, methodological religious experience in with to finally uh, going in with to, uh, to a personal misunderstanding. Um, again, a, 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 this is, in a sense, these are all being influenced by, by kind of Tibetan imagery. Again, the, the, or, the oral form uh, combined with prophetic, like things like the end of the world, uh, forms uh, coming back on themselves. Uh, the house of the self, I'm starting to integrate both Eastern and, 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 and Western imagery. Uh, here, I want to take it like uh, mysticism has negative aspects. So I thought that if you, uh, in a sense, inverse, the, I mean, like the effect of a person of a mystical experience on themselves uh, would always appear to be positive. I think there's a great, a great negative dark night of the soul that, that many of the uh, great books like John of the Cross, the mystic, talked about is that if you were to have that experience, how would you depict it? So I thought that it must have the same kind of integration with the universe, the sense of like of total unity, of, of uh, no longer there being dichotomies of things. 
And so that I thought of like inversing the, the human body in relation to the universe. So the, a topological inversion of where uh, you are at one, like all your organs spread out and connect to the universe. And like your skin forms again that, that, that situation where you have, uh, the, the, you can see across and see the back of your head. So that you, you feel a total unification throughout the universe. But yet you are now, in a sense, totally alone. This was like kind of a story of the guy walking along with his dog, and he got inversed, and the dog simply got enlarged, and is now watching the moon rotate around the Earth. All the rest of the of the of, of the like the star systems and galaxies have been miniaturized in, in the opposite way. Uh, this this was uh, I. I I'm interested in the form of, of the chort, which is a, uh, a kind of a mandala made into like a, a kind of pagoda-like form, a temple. And that, uh, so I said, what th this to me would be uh, an interesting way to have a, a studio for myself. And what would I use as the part? So like I took like an extinct volcano, I tore the top off of the Chrysler building, uh, things like uh, um, I mean, I'm very, very interested in Zeppelins that now they make a tremendous comeback. Um, I would have like uh, Babbitt's Abbott. Babbitt was a person who dealt with color, uh, human theory in the 19th century. And he, he proposed a, a, uh, an atom which is very much like the, the chakra system. Um, so I, I, like, I'm a miniature of the Great Pyramid. Um, uh, by Klein Bottle House, which I'll talk about later, uh, like kind of mythic animals, a whole, a whole uh, a raft of things. Like this would be out of the middle of the ocean. But this one is on the black hole, uh, representing the universe as if you collected all, all of the black holes into one place, that then you could randomize the entire system of the universe but then you would reach, as the physicists would say, like a kind of alpha random, which would then lead you to uh, a systemic flowering of the universe, which in Teilhard de Chardin's uh, evolutionary sense uh, would be the, the omega point. And that the, um, so it was here I began to introduce my system of dimensions of, of spatiality and temporality. They are essentially like point, line, plane, solid, solid, void, uh, round and metaspace, uh, instant interval succession, Durant's time, eternity, hypraxis, um, uh, zeit, and metatime. And that these would be like what, what I would later develop and, and make cognates with people who talk about like, uh, like higher levels of existence or higher realms, or there being a hierarchy or a holyarchy. I think that we could uh, combine all of the uh, the the, the scientific concepts of what dimensionality is with, with qualities, with states of consciousness, uh, and, and forms that go beyond consciousness. Uh, this is like dealing with the, um, the um, es essentially like the Pythagorean uh, concept of the, of the golden proportion. I'm, I'm going to move a, a little, a little faster now. Uh, this again is like a, a tesseract, a fourth-dimensional cube. I'm getting involved in, and this, this is uh, my version of the Oblong motor, a motor which uh, Wilhelm Reich left undone at the time of his death. And I thought it, it made more sense to deal with it not in terms of, of like. Uh, uh, Geiger counters that he was working with, but actually a motor based on the idea of, of the convergence of uh, various forms of, of energy. Because I think like um, uh, what I call meta-energy, we call it Oblon energy, or Hindus would call Pranya, or uh, Bergson would call Elan Vital. Uh, all, all these energies that are in, in, a, in a sense, the same thing. There's about 150 names for energies where it's efficacious without motion. It's kind of fifth dimensional energy. And would, to my mind, would be the basis of, of things like psychokinesis. So this is a motor based on psychokinesis 
through a device that would produce it and a way to release the energy. Um, 